You're on. I'm on? Okay. <clears throat> Hi, uh, my name's Mark Carson, and um, give you a little bit of background. I know, I've known Paul for Paul Pettifer for the last few years. I actually spent a couple of years there in Lake Charles, and he and I served together on staff at a local church there in Lake Charles. And uh, then I moved here to Tet back to Texas to take another position as an associate pastor to work closely hand in hand with the, with the senior pastor here at a local church. And I had very high expectations and really, really was excited about what God was calling me to do. Of course, brought my family. I'm married and have six, six little ones. Uh, well, I had five then. We've had, we've had six more than once since I've been here. Um, anyway, when I came here, I had very high expectations and really thought uh, that the pastor and I were going to be on the same page. And it turned out, it didn't take very long to realize that that just wasn't the case. And uh, over the course of the two years that I was employed there, things just continued to go downhill and get worse and worse. And I guess, in, in my very strong opinion, you know, we just weren't treated well at the end of the day. And, it was a very, very tough experience, um, and at the end of the two years, we were we were hanging on by a pretty thin thread. And uh, when things finally did end, did end there, they did not end well. Um, I think there were strong elements of betrayal and uh, mistreatment and even spiritual abuse. Um, and when it finally did happen, uh, it, it all happened on a Saturday night. And, we were finished, and the next morning we had to get up and tell our children that that uh, the, ch the church that we've been going to for two years would no longer have us. So it was very devastating, not only for me, but for my entire family. Um, and I guess the main thing I wanted to get across to you guys, I know you guys are talking about perseverance today. I've never really been through a real, honest-to-goodness depression. I've had lots of things happen in my life, uh, like many of you have. But I never, had never gone through a real significant depression. Uh, immediately went to counseling, so did many of members of my family. And I was diagnosed with um, not only depression, but also uh, clinical anxiety. <clears throat> and uh, day after day, week after week, and month after month after month after month, of just every day, just having this black cloud just follow me around trying to figure out and make sense of why God would call me to this place and why this had to happen this way. I also had a lot of bitterness and unforgiveness issues to deal with. Um, and over time, between my, the battle between my flesh and spirit, which was a pretty intense battle, I might add, over time, uh, God has taken me, taken me a long way. And I've gotten to the point where I, I hesitate to tell you that I've achieved forgiveness because it's kind of like a monkey that... Uh, that jumps on your back when you think that he's finally gone, he keeps coming back, so I don't want to tell you I'm totally over it. It's been about a year since that happened. Um, but I have been significantly changed. I had a friend, a pastor friend, tell me about two months after this happened. He told me, he said, uh, Mark, he said, what God's going to do with you during this time cannot be achieved just in normal circumstances, reading your Bible in, in, in the normal times and flows of life. He's going to do significant spiritual surgery in your life, whether you were in the wrong or not about what happened to you. It turns out that guy was right on the money. Because as I sit here a year later, I am significantly different. And I cannot claim that because of anything I've done. I cannot claim that because I'm good. Because the truth of the matter is, I wanted to go whip someone every, almost every day for months, and I didn't. I didn't want uh, to give in to. I didn't. I didn't want to forgive. I didn't want to let go. But what I discovered is this: that when when you have to forgive life's biggest hurts, really, what that is, if you're a believer in Christ and you've come to know Him as the Lord of your life, really, what that is is God's. It's a big Bible word. It's called sanctification. He uses it as a way to make you more like Jesus. Is almost over. That's fine. <clears throat> and that's what's happened to me. Uh, I can't give all the glory to God because I didn't want that. To, I, I wasn't uh, inclined to do that. I was inclined to hang on to that forgiveness. I mean, unforgiveness, and hang on to that bitterness. But God has slowly worked in me and been patiently relentless in continuing to make me give that up and give up my rights, and even give up my right that I think I was right about it. Here's my final point about that. 
what God has shown me is that when you forgive somebody, not only do you set yourself free, but when you really forgive somebody, because God led me to pray for this person for a long time. At first, my prayers were very short, but and they weren't really with the best motives. But over time, I can tell you that I've come to the point where I can love this person and in fact have gone to this person, asked for forgiveness for the areas where I did mess up in my own self because any conflict that you have, there's always something wrong with you as well. Even though I didn't believe that most of it was my fault, I humbled myself before that person because God had me do that. And the point is that if I can love that person, and I'll tell you this, if you can love that person who's hurt you, and you can really love them with God's love, here's the, here's the beauty of that, then you can love other people much, much easier and much, much better. The second thing that's happened is this. When you persevere through this, and, and believe me, again, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to go through this, hated this, would never choose this road. But the other thing that God has produced through this perseverance is a much more compassionate heart. Because now, because I've been through that significant and unbelievable pain, which I just can't possibly explain to you how difficult it has been, I can feel the pain of other people like I never have ever before. Um, mercy, grace toward other people, uh, the desire to, uh, to understand and empathize has grown immensely in me. And again, I can take no credit for that. That's not because of behavior modification. That's not me trying to be better. That's because of God producing something in me through an extremely tough time that He, I believe, orchestrated uh, in his sovereignty to be able to make me more like him. So I guess what I would say to you guys is this. <clears throat> the idea of persevering is not an easy thing. But God, if he's calling you to a, to a trial in your life, it, there, there's a reason for it. And it may take days, weeks, months, or even years to get to the other side and understand some of it or maybe, maybe understand all of it. Hopefully we will. But the bottom line is that when we get to that point, we can start to see the things that God has changed in us. And very often, He's trying to produce something in us. And in my case, it was a much more forgiving heart and a much more compassionate heart. And i got a long way to go, and uh, I'm never going to arrive. But what God has done to me is significant. and it's never, I've never been through anything like this before. But the, the process of persevering is a process of life change and transformation. It's not just about head knowledge. It's about being different. And God has changed me and made me more different. And I give Him all the credit for that. Because again, I would never have chosen this road. And if it had been up to me, I'd have just hung on to that unforgiveness and hung on to it forever. But He wouldn't let me do that. So I guess the last thing I would just tell you is that if you're going through a trial and you're having to persevere through that trial, hang on. And by the way, if you're not, but you know someone who is, reach out to them. I cannot tell you when you're going through a serious depression how important it is to have people just reach into your world just a little bit. Just let you know they care about you in some form or fashion. I never knew until I was that low, that low in, in terms of my depression, how much that means to, to, to people. So I would encourage you, if you're not going through that, reach out to somebody who is. Because it makes all the difference in the world.